Welcome to ChrisSwiftStudio.com. This is Chris, and in today's Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial, we'll be taking a look at the interface. So let's get started. In uh, FCPX version um, 10.1.1, uh, this area here, which contains all the assets for your, your files, your movie, your project, is going to look completely different. If you're working in 10.0.9, um, this is going to be brand new for you. So you're going to have to check out the video on how to organize this in 10.0.9. But again, I'm working in 10.1.1, and you've got libraries and projects and then events. Check out one of our other videos on how to set this all up in importing files. So this area is called the event browser. As you can see, I can simply, it's not clicking and dragging, I can, I, I can simply hover over and view the entire clip that I have, just skimming over the clip. If I want to hide this area, all I have to do is click this button. I get a little bit more real estate. I can sort my clips by getting the drop-down menu here, and I can sort them by all these criteria, and I can also group the clips in different ways. If I want to watch the, uh, just see the, the visual aspect of the clips, I have this on. If I want to see just the names, click on that, and that'll bring up all the names of your different clips that you have in your project. Um, yeah, you know, visual. Once they're on, on the visual aspect like this, you can change the uh, duration of the thumbnail by clicking and dragging here. I usually have it set maybe around there. And I can also change how large these clips are by clicking there and dragging the slider. And if I want to see the waveforms, click on that. Just about everything is clickable in this interface, and, and there's a lot of stuff buried in all different little corners. Okay, moving left to right, uh, let's come down and maybe select this clip. Um, click here to move our playhead. And now, with this particular clip, I can transform it or crop it or distort it here. Uh, if I want to view this full screen, click right there. And it will automatically play. Hit the space bar to pause. Hit the on your keyboard. Hit the escape button to bring it back again. And with these controls, again, I can play by pressing that and pause. Even more convenient is simply to hit the space bar to play and the space bar again to pause. These controls will jump you to the next edit point. So if I click there, you'll see the playhead moving to all the specific edit points. That's a nice place, a nice way to jump around your timeline uh, for doing a host of things, including in inserting clips if you want to. And you can come back up the timeline to your edit points. Even more convenient than these buttons is just your up and down arrow on your keyboard. If you hit the up arrow, you'll go up the timeline to the edit points or the down arrow to the next subsequent one, the first frame in the next edit point, the first frame in the next edit point. Okay, and likewise, if you want to jump to the very beginning of your project, it is function left arrow or function right arrow to go to the very end. And of course, you can just click your playhead too and move it around if you want to. All right, where next? Oh, yeah, uh, this is the viewer, of course, where you can see your uh, clips in the timeline. And you have a lot of different zoom options here. I almost always have this on just fit. And this fit will also, it will stay fitted, if you will, even if I resize, which I can do here, come down and get that handle. And if I have a lot, a lot of different layers, if I've got, you, you know, one particular uh, a, a, a layer, if you will, uh, for music or titles or all the other things you can put on here, you might want to expand this. So you just pull it up and you can see your viewer automatically resizes to stay fit. Let's bring that down a little bit. You can do a two finger drag down here in the timeline to move up and down to see everything, all your assets that you have. 
and you also have this uh, to show what kind of uh, display you want, a video scope. So we're going to work with this a lot when we do color grading um, and all these other guys. You can see alpha channel. That's basically a transparency channel, which I don't have here. Um, so I want to view all. You could also, I say, view by channel. You could view just the red, the green, or the blue channels. Okay. Now, you see this over here. Let's, let's come down to the timeline. Select one of these clips. And when you press this button, this is for your inspector window right here. And we will be doing a lot of work with this. And this will give you just a brief idea of all the different changes you can make and manipulations you can make on a particular video clip. Um, and also you can do a lot of stuff with audio. And this is new in 10.1 also, the info button. If it's 10.0.9, I think somewhere down here there's a button that says I on it to get this. And uh, this will give you all sorts of stuff about the clip that you have selected, the duration, audio output channels, and a whole lot of other stuff. Okay. Also, when you're in the info, you can choose what kind of view do you want. Review, you want extended view, do you want just the audio view to give you information about audio or anything else. I usually keep EXIF data, IPTC data, I usually keep it on extended. Okay, pretty good. Now, moving along pretty well here, that covers sort of the top portion. Um, now, let's move down to this middle bar here. If you want to press on this, you can import media, uh, and there it all is. If you have clips on a camera or a card or whatever, plug it into your computer, you'll be able to navigate to it and import whatever you want. Okay, metadata, if you want to set up keywords, click on that and this could be very useful when you're searching for clips in the future. Uh, this also will be uh, very, we'll be going over all these three here that are kinda grayed out at the moment but if I click on one clip in the event browser I'll have three different options for importing them um, for editing. I could bring this in uh, just to the primary, uh, connect it to the primary storyline. If I hit Q on this clip that I have selected, it'll come in here on top of the primary storyline. Uh, if I hit that one, it will insert the clip where I have the playhead. This happens to be the W key, keyboard shortcut, and it took that clip and it inserted it exactly at the playhead in the main storyline. I'll do Command Z to get back out of that again. And if I take that clip and I select it one more time, if I hit the E key, this is going to append the clip to the very end of the storyline. So I've got a lot of different ways to bring a clip in. I can also click and drag on the clip and uh, bring it into the timeline wherever I want it. Except, I will not, if I do the click and drag, be able to bring the clip in right here. I will not be able to automatically blade this clip and, and split it and then insert this clip. The only way to do that is to highlight it and then with the W key, it'll bring it right. It cut that one clip and inserted it. Command Z to go back down again and get back out of that again. Here we have our tools it's set on this select tool. We'll be working with every single one of these to see what they do. And especially our keyboard shortcuts. I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts. Let's move here to this panel. Now this thing is, can be quite a mystery to some people. You'll, you'll see this scrolling up sometimes from zero up to 100%. What it's doing is doing some kind of task. If you want to see what kind of task is going on, simply click on that and you get your background tasks. And yeah, that will show you the progress of what's going on as it's working in the background while you can still be editing. Okay, so 
check this one out. This will tell you uh, the time actually on your timeline, hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. If I click on this once, and let's say I want to jump to exactly 30 seconds in my timeline, 30, there it is, it jumps to exactly 30 seconds in the timeline. Now, if I want to uh, click it one more time, if I want to advance by exactly five frames, plus five. And if I want to go back by 15 frames, minus 15, that'll jump me back. So this is a very handy way to jump specifically and uh, to exact places in your timeline. Now, as you play, you'll see the little audio bars here. But if that's not quite big enough for you and you want to get a better view, just click on that once and you'll see your audio bars pop out on the right. And if that's too big for you, you can come over here, hover, grab the handle, click on that, and you can drag it in or drag it out, whatever you want. And if you want to make it disappear again, click here one more time. Okay, let's come over here. You've got some fantastic tools just built in already. The enhancements menu is right over here. Uh, and again, we'll be going over all of these. You can do color work with the top three, audio work with the bottom three. Come over here, you can do retiming. You can retime clips, slow them down, speed them up, do a whole bunch of other stuff also. Here we have the effects browser. It's kind of cool. You can, let me expand this up a little bit. Here we go, yeah, much better. Okay, and now for the effects browser, this will put effects on clips. So what you can do is again, just skim over it and then you can see in the viewer the effect coming in, aged paper. Um, and then if you like it, what you do is, you'll see in subsequent videos, so we'll go over all this stuff. You just click and drag it onto your clip to make it happen. Import photos by clicking on the icon of the camera. Import music by clicking on the musical note. Here you can make transitions between clips and you'll get a whole bunch of options in that. In fact, I think you've got a, a whole lot more options, a whole lot more uh, different choices in uh, starting with 10.1. But there are also a, a whole lot of third-party plugins where you can get different uh, kind of transitions between clips. Adding titles, click on the T key, and again, you just skim over them to get an idea of what your title is going to look like. There you go. Generators. The Generators browser is here and you've got more fantastic stuff that you could put on to your clips and you can manipulate every one of these generators quite easily with uh, opacity and a whole bunch of other stuff. And now the Themes browser over here. Even more stuff just built in um, to Final Cut Pro 10 that you can put in with all their different categories that you could filter, you know, narrow your search for. And again, this is for the inspector window. Turn that off, turn that on, and we'll be doing a lot of work in here. Okay, that covers that. Excellent. And now let us X out of this. Let's take a look a little bit in our timeline over here. And you can expand or contract the size of this timeline time line by clicking on your slider button there. You can kind of make it fit to window at any point you want uh, just by on your keyboard clicking Shift Z and that'll just always fit it. Now you can also adjust the height of these clips by clicking right there. You can make them bigger if you want, smaller if you want, whatever. Click here to see only the audio waveforms. Click here to see mostly the audio waveforms. Click here to see kind of half and half the audio video, uh, mostly video, a little bit of the waveform, uh, only the video, and just bars. Sometimes this is very useful if you have really big complicated projects and you're just trying to organize the kind of thing. Um, it sometimes is easier to see it in that view. I kind of like the sort of half and half, maybe a little bit more audio. 
click anywhere to make that go away. Okay, and down to here, the last one we're going to look at today is the timeline index. This can be useful, again, especially if you have large projects, a lot of clips, audio clips, you know, video clips, uh, music, titles, generators, all the rest of this stuff can get, and then eventually you want to go back and try to find something. And this makes it really easy. If I want to find this clip called Parade Number 3, just click on it and you can see it's highlighted and the playhead jumps to the first frame. If I want to go to this first gap, it goes to the first gap clip. You can also search through your timeline index by simply clicking on here. Let's say maybe I want Peep Parade 18. That's the one I want to look at. There it is. Okay, I actually have two of them called Parade 18. Now, this is going to stay live, if you will. Uh, the only way to come back and view all of them again is to just make that go away. Now you come back. It's very easy um, to find clips you want, especially if they are named intuitively to start with, which as you see mine aren't. I've got Parade 00, Parade 02. I'm not really sure what that is. There's Parade 02. That's close up uh, of the girls in their traditional Thai costumes. If I simply click on that one more time, I can put in whatever you want. I'm just going to say close up here. And when I hit return, you will see that the name actually updated on the timeline itself. Shift Z to make it fit again. You can do uh, a, a, a whole lot of different kind of viewing. You could view video only or audio only or titles only. That's real useful too. Okay, the last little bit, I thought that was going to be the last one, but it isn't really. The last thing I want to look at are just a few of these over here. With this button, uh, this is for your skimming audio and video on or off. It's on now, so you can see I can skim smoothly through the timeline and also clips in the event browser. If I turn that off, of course, I lose this ability. And then, to get around the timeline, I need to click on the playhead and bring that through. This button is to listen to the audio clips while you're skimming. Personally, I find this to be extremely distracting. Um, it, I'm sure it's useful for some people. It may be for you. If so, go ahead and do that. But with that on, you'll hear the audio as well as see the video. I usually have that off. This last one for your editing, it we'll be using this a lot in, in many of our editing videos we here, uh, have here on the site. Uh, snapping is extremely useful, keyboard shortcut N, and you'll see now as I skim, it won't be smooth around the edit points. It jumps to an edit point and stays there. It'll jump to that chapter marker. We have, had, have that in uh, this fantastic addition to 10.1, ability to make chapter markers for burning DVDs. So I'm jumping here, jumping to the edit points. It snaps to them. Um, when I'm doing specific kinds of editing, I have this on absolutely. Usually I have it off and you can see it's smooth as I go through the timeline now. Okay, that's it. I think I covered it all. Pretty much sure. Uh, that's our overview for the interface for 10 Point one point one. Um, in our subsequent videos, if you're working with 10.0.9, uh, the vast majority of stuff that, that you'll see on our videos here will be the same as what you will see. There will be some extremely minor differences, so don't worry about it and just carry on. Okay. Thanks for viewing. We'll see you next time.